It was supposed to be dismantled after 20 years, but it is still standing, fortunately for the French. Today we want to tell you about how the Eiffel Tower was built, a unique engineering feat in history and one that had to overcome quite a few obstacles along the way, the most important of which were the lawsuits brought by Parisians to stop its construction. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The Eiffel Tower, named after its creator Gustave Eiffel, opened on March 31st, 1889 for the Paris Exposition, coinciding with the centenary of the French Revolution. Eiffel's project was chosen from the over 100 presented to the French government, including a gigantic sprinkler and a monumental guillotine in memory of the revolution. Well, if we put like that, it seems that the Eiffel Tower was an obvious choice, but in reality it too was not well liked at first. There were those who were afraid that it would attract a lot of lightning, and those who said it would act as a mega magnet for all the metal objects in Paris. Disregarding the fake news, which already existed at that time, most of the public simply found it ugly. Such a futuristic monument made of iron had nothing to do with the timeless classical beauty of the City of Light. However, the organizers of the World's Fair were completely and utterly fascinated by Gustave Eiffel's groundbreaking plans. By the way, why Eiffel specifically? The French engineer was famous up until that time mostly for the bridges he had built, actually also for the Statue of Liberty, but we'll talk about that later. And many French engineers did not think he was up to a project like that, but if they had carefully observed his works, they would have noticed a detail that would later prove to be instrumental in the success of the future Eiffel Tower, namely, the innovative and iconic lattice structure he employed. You know those little triangles that make up the Eiffel Tower? They have a crucial function in keeping the tower standing and countering the force of the wind. Let's see why. The construction of the Eiffel Tower began on January 28, 1887, and went on for two years, two months, and five days. To begin with, the geology of the Champs de Mars was analyzed to ensure that the grounds were suitable, as they would have to support a weight of 20 to 25 kilograms per square centimeter. This area was then covered with sand and gravel of varying thicknesses, which would help support the foundations. On July 1st, 1887, the construction of the four enormous lattice structure pillars began. These pillars tilt inward at an angle of 54 degrees, which worried passers-by quite a bit. But the silhouette of the Eiffel Tower was not designed as it was for aesthetic reasons, but rather for ones related to physics and mathematics, since the curvature of the edges was calculated to counteract the force of the wind. Its profile, in fact, manages to convert the bending and shear stresses into compressive stresses at the base, transferring not only its own weight to the ground, but also the horizontal wind load. An additional stress-decreasing stratagem was the use of the lattice structure design. The metal truss with triangular mesh actually reduces the area exposed to the wind and evenly distributes the loads on the individual shafts that make up the structure. These techniques, definitely groundbreaking for the time, enabled Eiffel to design a tower of a never-before-seen height. Just imagine, when the first platform was put in place, the Eiffel Tower was already taller than the Notre Dame Cathedral which was 69 meters high, the Pantheon at 83 meters, and the Dome of Les Invalides, which, with a height of 104 meters, was the tallest building in the city. From that point onwards, it was a race against the clock to meet the building deadlines. Anyone who didn't show up for work in the morning would get fired or replaced immediately, and an extra bonus was promised to each of the workers if the deadline was respected. Despite the unsafe working conditions of the time, only one of the 300 workers involved in the project lost their life. And that happened right in the middle of the elevator construction phase. Once finished, the tower was 312 meters tall. Today, with the antennas on top, it measures 324 meters, and it remained the tallest building in the world until 1930, when it was surpassed by the Chrysler Building in New York. Fun fact! On particularly hot summer days, the tower is several centimeters higher due to the expansion of the metal. When it heats up, metal expands and in the case of the Eiffel Tower, there is a lot of metal, so it grows a few centimeters. 
Let's debunk the myth that the Eiffel Tower was only supposed to stand in its place for one year, the year of the World's Fair to be precise. The original plan was for it to be dismantled after about 20 years, the duration of time deemed necessary for the expenses incurred in building it to be recouped through ticket sales. But what happened? Why is he still there? The idea of putting an antenna on top was what saved it. Placing one in such a high position proved to be extremely beneficial for radio transmissions during wartime, and thus essential from a strategic standpoint. And of course, on top of that, there's also the incredible success it had as a tourist attraction already in the early 1900s. Just imagine, since its opening it has been visited by over 250 million visitors. More fun facts. Its elevators have never stopped working. They only ever stop one at a time for maintenance, except during the period in which the Nazis occupied the city. Hitler, who wanted to climb it, was told that due to the war it was not possible to get spare parts and that if he really wanted to climb the tower, he would have to go up the steps on foot. 1,665 steps. Unfortunately for him, as the story goes, as soon as he left, the elevator started working again perfectly. Dear friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Ah, one last interesting fact. Gustav Eiffel also played a role in constructing the Statue of Liberty, which was unveiled three years before the Eiffel Tower was completed. Okay friends, see you in the next video on Geopop, Everyday Science.